Today we're solving systems of equations again, but we're going to solve by substitution. We're going to use the substitution method. And the first question we should always ask ourselves is, when should I use this method? It's a great method to use when you can easily solve for one variable in at least one equation. And I'll show you what that looks like in our examples today. The steps to solve, and you can refer to these as you're going working through problems, or to isolate one variable. That means get one variable all by itself on one side of the equal sign. And you can solve for x or y. I know that most of my Algebra 1 students really feel comfortable solving for y because we do it so much converting to slope-intercept form. But you can also solve for x, whichever is easier. The next step is we are going to substitute the expression into either equation and solve for the value of the other variable. And the last and final step is to substitute the value of the variable into one of the equations and solve for the remaining variable. So let's get started on the examples. And you can refer to those steps as you're working through these problems. So in example number one, the first step says to isolate one variable. Well, as you can see, and I'm actually going to label these, equation one and equation two. In equation one, I've already solved for x x equals 2y plus 4. If x equals 2y plus 4, anywhere I see x in my other equation, I can replace it or substitute it with 2y plus 4. I see x right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that variable out and I'm going to replace x with that entire expression. So what I like to do when I'm showing the substitution method first is 3. I'm going to take that variable out, and I'm just going to replace it with a set of parentheses. Notice that everything else stays the same in my equation. So I'm going to rewrite that equation, but I'm going to replace the variable with parentheses. And then inside those parentheses, I'm putting what I replace x with, which is 2y plus 4. What I have effectively done is created one equation with one variable, and you know how to solve that. I'm just going to distribute, combine like terms, move the variables one side, and solve. So the first thing I'm going to do is distribute the 3 into each term on this side of the parentheses. So I get 6y plus 12 plus y equals 5. And now I'm going to combine like terms. So I get 7y plus 12 equals 5. And now I'm just going to solve for y. I'm going to do that by subtracting 12 from both sides and I get 7y equals negative 7. When I divide both sides by 7, I get y equals negative 1. Now that I've solved for y, I can take that y value and I can plug it into either equation and solve for x. I'm going to plug it into this top equation here. If x equals 2y plus 4, then x equals 2 times, I can replace y, with the value of y. And I'm actually going to do this using the same method that I just showed you in pink, right? I'm going to remove the y value and I'm going to put what I'm replacing y with, which is negative 1. Again, I've created one equation with one variable, but notice it's the other variable, so let's solve for it. Negative 2 plus 4, when I um, add those, I get x equals positive 2. And now I can just write this as an ordered pair. My solution is 2, negative 1. All right, let's move on to the next example. In the next example, you see I have, I, I don't have a variable already solved for. So I can actually solve for a variable, either any variable in either of these equations. And I'm going to label this equation 1 and equation 2. And you can solve for y, obviously, in your first equation. I think you can easily solve for x in your second equation. What I'm going to do is actually solve for y in that top equation. I'm just choosing. So in that first equation, what I am going to do is, and I'm actually going to show you over here. So y minus 1 equals, I'm going to distribute that 2 inside the parentheses. So I'm going to simplify the right side of that equal sign. And now I'm going to add 1 to both sides, which is going to affect this term right here. So y equals 2x plus 3. I've now solved for a variable in one equation, right? I've put it, um, 
of solve for y equals 2x plus 3. So if y equals 2x plus 3 in that top equation, anywhere I see y in that second equation, which is right there, I can replace it with 2x plus 3. So watch how I do this. I have x minus, I'm going to take y out of the equation and replace it with parentheses. Everything else I'm writing there, right? So I'm taking y out and I'm replacing it with parentheses, and now I'm going to put what y equals inside those parentheses, which is 2x plus 3. And again, I have effectively created one equation with one variable, and now I can just solve for that variable. I'm going to distribute that negative, and now I'm going to combine like terms. I get negative x minus 3 equals 2. When I add 3 to both sides, I get negative x equals 5. And now I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1 to get x equals negative 5. So I've solved for the value of x, and now I need to solve for the value of y. So what I'm going to do is go back into any of these equations. Whoops, sorry, dropped my pen. Go back into any of these equations, and I'm going to plug in the value of, negative, of x, which is negative 5. But because I've manipulated that top equation, I can actually plug it into this one. And that's what I'm going to do because y is already solved for, okay? So y equals 2x plus 3. I'm going to replace x with parentheses, and I'm going to put what x equals inside those parentheses, which is negative 5. And now I'm just going to solve. I get negative 10 plus 3. So y equals negative 7. And I'm going to write that as an ordered pair. Negative 5, negative 7. And that's your solution. Let's move on to example number 3. Okay, in example number 3, let's see. We do not have y or x solve for in either of these equations. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose an equation and I'm going to solve for one variable, right? I'm going to put it in terms of the other variable. And I'm actually, I'm going to label this equation 1 and equation 2, and I'm actually going to um, use equation 2. So let's see what we have here. y plus 3, and I'm going to rewrite it, but I'm going to distribute this 1 fourth into each term in um, this set of parentheses. So I get 1 fourth x plus 1. When I solve for y, I subtract 3 from both sides, so I get y equals 1 fourth x minus 2. So that's what I've done, okay? I've, I have solved for one variable. I've put it in terms of the other variable in one of the equations. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take what y equals, which is 1 fourth x minus 2, and I'm going to plug it in for y or substitute it into the other equation for y right here. So, and I'm going to write that up here, okay? So instead of 4 times y, I'm going to do 4 times whatever y equals minus x equals 16. And what does y equal? It equals 1 fourth x minus 2. Okay, and we're you, I'm going to walk you through the whole process. Some of you already might see what's going on here. Okay, but I'm going to walk you through the whole process of using the substitution method. So I'm going to distribute the 4 into this set of parentheses. And I'm just what I'm doing here is I'm just solving for x, right? I've created one equation with one variable. Let's solve for the value of that variable. So when I do this, um, 4 times 1 fourth is just 1, so that's x. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, minus x equals 16. Okay. When I combine like terms, x and negative x, those actually cancel, and I'm left with negative 8 equals 16. Does negative 8 equal 16? That is not a true statement. When you can eliminate your variables and you end with a statement that is not true, negative 8 does not equal 16. This is not true. Your answer is no solution. And actually, if you would have solved for y, or converted these to slope-intercept form, um, you would have seen that they have the same slope and different y-intercepts, thus making them parallel lines. Do parallel lines have a solution? They do not, because if the solution is the point of intersection and they never intersect, then there's no solution. Okay, so let's move on to example number four. Here I have equation one, here I have equation two. I'm going to solve for 
a variable, put it in terms of the other variable in one of these equations. And I'm actually going to do that in this equation because it looks easier to solve for a variable. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. So 3 over 2x minus 5. So now I have what y equals in one equation. And what I'm going to do is take what y equals and I'm going to replace um, the variable y in my other equation or substitute it in with um, the expression for that variable. So I see y right there in my first equation. So instead of 2y minus 3x equals negative 10 in that first equation, I'm going to do 2 and I'm going to replace y with parentheses minus 3x equals negative 10. So notice everything, I write everything the exact same as that in that equation, but I just replace y with parentheses. And now I'm going to put what y equals, which is 3 over 2x minus 5. Now I've created one equation, one variable, and I can solve for the value of the variable. So let's distribute this 2 into each term in this set of parentheses. 2 times 3 over 2x, well, my 2's cancel, right? And I'm left with 3x, 2 times negative 5 is negative 10, minus 3x equals negative 10. So now let's combine like terms. If I combine my variables, 3x and negative 3x actually cancel out and I'm left with negative 10 equals negative 10. So in this situation, I've eliminated my variables and I've ended with a statement that is true. Does negative 10 equal negative 10? It does. The answer in this case is there are infinitely many solutions. So there are infinitely many solutions. When you get rid of your variables and you end up with a statement that is true, there are infinitely many solutions. Meaning, if you solve for y and graph these, you would be graphing the exact same line, right? Same slope, same y-intercept. So you can also write an infinity symbol. You can also write all real numbers. Any of these actually work um, when you're writing your solution. I tend to like infinitely many solutions. That's what I tend to write most often when I'm writing and the answer to a problem like this. So that concludes your notes over solving a two by two, that's a two variable, two equations, two variables, system of equations, solving by substitution. I hope it was helpful.